I received tithes, but he received them, and of whom it is writ, of whom it is witnessed that he lived. And as I may say so, Levi also, who received tithes, paid tithes in Abraham, for he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being changed, there is made a necessity a change also of the law. For he whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe, of which no man gave attendance at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord sprung out of, out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning the priesthood, and it is yet for, far more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek there arise another priest. And we read it, we're going to go back to that in Zechariah 6 and 13, proving that's the Lord, who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of endless life. For he testified, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. For there is a, verily a disannowing of commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. For the law was made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw now unto God. And and as much as not without an oath, he was made priest. For those priests were made without an oath. But this was with an oath by him that said unto him, The Lord swore and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. By so much was Yahushua made a surety of a better testimony. And they truly were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, because he continueth ever, have an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever lived to make intercession for them. For such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once when he offered up himself. Okay, so when the Lord died on the cross, he died for his sins in his past life as Solomon. But you can read that on your own because I'm not going to draw this out. At first, uh, what's that? First Kings 11. All right. First Kings 11, when um, he had started worshiping the, the idols of, of his women, them strange women he married. He built temples to their gods and started worshiping them when he was old. All right, so he had to pay for that when, when he came as the Lord, okay? That's why I said Hebrews 7:27. Who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice for first for his own sins and then for the people's for it. This he did once when he offered up himself. For the law maketh man high priest which have infirmities, but the word of the oath which was since the law maketh the son who is consecrated forevermore. forevermore. All right. That's right. So read that again. Zechariah six and twelve. Zechariah chapter six verse twelve. And speak unto him, saying, Thus speak of the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch. And he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. Even he shall build the temple of the Lord, and he shall bear the glory, 
and shall sit and rule upon his throne, and he shall be a priest upon his throne, and the council of peace shall be between them both. Okay. So that proved that the Lord was going to be a high priest, like we broke down about him being a priest after the order of Melchizedek, all right? Which Melchizedek was the king of righteousness, that's what his name meant, who was king of Shalom, which is king of peace, all right? And he was the, the priest of the most high power. So we really called Jesus Christ was going to be in that stand, according to the prophecies. And we just read those. Zechariah 3 and 8. It says, Hear now, O Joshua the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wander at. For behold, I will bring forth my servant the branch. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave the graving thereof saith the Lord of hosts and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day and in that day saith the Lord shall ye call every man his neighbor under the vine and under the fig tree okay so the branch was coming to remove the iniquity of what the land I'm talking about the Israelites alright back that up all right. I mean, right now, I'm just going to end it right there. All right. I mean, because it's, it's been pretty long. All right. And maybe, Lord willing, I'll finish the rest of it off later on, going into the part breaking down about the Lord being crucified, that it was prophesied that, um, it's a lot that Yahweh Shai, I mean, that if Solomon, which was that son whom the Lord chose of, of David to be his son, all right, all right, which was Solomon, that if he was to sin, he was going to be beaten with the stripes of men. And that went in about the Lord, because that's how he, he had suffered, all right. But because he, he, he was obedient as Yahweh Shai, he received that that glory that was promised to him if he was to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. And that's what he did as Yahweh Shai. Therefore, that's why he was given the kingdom that was promised to him, that was promised to David. When you read 2 Samuel chapter uh, 7, verse 12 through um, 14. So I'm going to end it right there. And I want to say um, all praises to Yahweh Shemel Shai. Devon is still a great millstone, talking his truth. Shalom to the Hakim out there pushing the truth and sincerity. Hopefully, this lesson was edifying. I know it was long. You know, Lord willing, you bear with me. Or you watch it all and get edified and built up. You know, and man. And, and, and like I said, it's a challenge. To any of you pork chop eating pastors, if you if you thought that uh, I was going off, hey, try to prove me wrong, but you ain't gonna be able to do it. But if you're a Negro, Latino, Native American, and you understood what was brought out, and you believe in the scriptures and stuff, you need to repent and believe and believe on the Lord, who you ever call Jesus Christ, according to the Bible, which his name is Yahweh in Hebrew, all right, and come back to uh, the Lord. And rehearse the righteous acts and regain your, your uh, nationality. You know. Alright. So with that, this is Brother Atazamia saying Shalom. Yeah.